welcome back to the Charles Butler Show. Uh, we have Mr. Brady Morrow with us today. And, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan Morrow. Uh, I always want to call him Ray for some reason. Uh, but uh, Ryan uh, has been uh, with us before. He's a national security analyst. And uh, this morning, uh, he's with the uh, Clarion Project. And this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, Islamists uh, exploit the Ferguson riots to promote resistance in the U.S. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any uh, any evidence that uh, these Islamists are are they part of the riot? Are they organizing the riot, or how are they involved in the uh, ongoing violence in Ferguson? Because we know that violence is being done by outside agitators and perpetrators. Uh, there's several layers to what's happening here. Uh, we don't know of Islamists actually taking part in the protests and the riots themselves, but we do know that, for example, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, uh, commonly known as CAIR, C-A-I-R, a group with links to the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas, uh, has been uh, certainly trying to fan the flames. Uh, at the national level, they do it with softer language, but then you have individual officials of the organization that are saying, tweeting out things like, uh, promoting resistance, actually using the word resistance, uh, which can be interpreted in, in certainly in very destructive ways. Uh, the other layer of involvement is that you have direct incitement of violence by groups like the Nation of Islam. And then the other layer is just general exploitation by the group, the Islamic State, and other violent organizations are hoping to pick off a few of the rioters and recruit them into their ranks. So what the Islamic State is doing is they are sending out tweets with the hashtag first so that they get attention, saying if you pledge allegiance to our group, then we will come send fight fighters for you, that this is proof that, especially for black people, there's no place for you in the United States, that the American experiment of democracy has failed, and it is time to embrace other forms of governance, uh, like Sharia, which would not be racist. Uh, at least that's what they're saying. Well, you know, I mean, having been to the Middle East, they don't have the kind of pro color issues that we have here. But they still have right. issues. Uh, they still have issues. And um, the Nation of Islam, what, what has uh, the Nation of Islam said or what have they done? I, I heard a couple of things from Farrakhan, but that's just Farrakhan being Farrakhan. Right, but even by Farrakhan's st standards, he's being ex exceptionally uh, involved in incitement. And the result that we're seeing here is that the, the promotion of this general mindset fuels violence because people who engage in riots like this, uh, it's not just rioting for the sake of rioting. What, they, what they're responding to is this twisted world view that they have, which is that revolution is necessary, violence is permissible when it previously wasn't, uh, because the American government and law enforcement is out to get you. They are a threat. And so the threat is so high that you're able to act out in these ways that are horrible and deplorable. Uh, so we have to recognize that it's an entire mindset that different groups feed into and exploit. Uh, in terms of actual violent plots, we know of at least one Islamic State supporter now that got arrested because he was directly threatening the life of uh, law enforcement in Ferguson. He was sending out Facebook messages talking about getting a group together to go kill them. He was trying to obtain a firearm illegally on Facebook as well. We know of two other new Black Panther members uh, who were involved in trying to put together a bomb plot. They, they were trying to obtain pipe bombs and they had gotten their hands on some guns because they are going to assassinate the chief of police, uh, the prosecuting uh, attorney general of the state, and various police officers in the Ferguson area. So it, it, uh, what personally surprises me is the fact that it's taken this long for outside groups uh, to radicalize people to the point of violence. You would have thought that they would have been on the scene right from the beginning. So why do you say that, Ryan? Well, because it's violent from the beginning from the people that are there, but if you're a member of the New Black Panther Party or uh, someone influenced by the Nation of Islam or the Islamic State, uh, this has been talked about for months now. You would assume that they would say, okay, well, if this is where I want to make my mark. This is where I want to set off the bomb. Uh, that they, they would have gone there so that they could do it the second that uh, there, there was no indictment or if the, there was a trial, it didn't go the way that you wanted. And so what we're seeing is that there was a little bit of a delay. The riots happened, and then it, it took some days for these folks to actually start implementing their plans to the point that they got arrested. 
So, yeah, so how organized are these people and how serious, you know, should we take these uh, these threats? Because, like you said, if they were serious, they would have been well planned out and, and ready for uh, execution uh, when the, when the um, verdict came down. Because they must have had some idea, as most people did. And, and you know, and a, and a lot of these grand juries, this is the thing that bothers me about this grand jury, these grand juries, is that, just like the grand juries of the old South, when they met to uh, try uh, Klansmen who killed black people and who killed white civil rights workers and leaders, um, they always refused to um, indict. So I don't understand it, uh, in 2014. Uh, given my experience with the criminal justice system, which I think is totally racist, um, why uh, people would be amazed and why they lie about the criminal justice system. We know that uh, in the Louima case in New York, this is just to name a few, in the Louima case in New York where they shot a man 45 times uh, because he reached for his wallet, never showed a gun, uh, that uh, the local grand jury refused to indict. Uh, the feds indicted. Several people went to prison. Uh, the Danzinger Bridge incident in New Orleans during Katrina, uh, where police fired on unarmed people and <laughs> planted guns on them. Local jury refused to indict. Federal uh, guys came in. People got anywhere from seven to ten years in prison, the police officers. Uh, and then um, uh, Rodney King, same thing. Uh, police officers were acquitted. Uh, if you refused to indict the police officers, the feds came, feds came in, uh, indicted, and people went to prison, went to jail. Uh, so, you know, and with my experience, where I just had three white people lie on me as eyewitnesses to a a a a a, a felonious, felonious assault, battery, and theft. I mean, it's. It's outrageous what these police officers do and what citizens do in this country. So I have little or no faith personally in the criminal justice system. I think it's a racket. Uh, it's a racket I used do have to faith in the criminal justice system. I'm sure that no there, faith. you know, incidents like that I'm sure definitely definitely happen. It seems like every time you talk to uh, a black person, every single one it seems has stories of, uh, of things like this. So it's obviously well, a problem. Yeah, and JC, while there may be these uh, legitimate Watts. complaints about law enforcement, uh, when you have Islamist groups out there that are uh, basically fabricating or exaggerating law enforcement to demonize all of them or to demonize the system as a whole, uh, that leads to a certain mindset that it ends in violence. It doesn't end in necessarily peaceful protests. Well, it ends in this. people not cooperating with law enforcement. It, it, it's very right. destructive. So there, we have to keep in mind the ideological element here where there's a difference between those that say, I, based on my experience, I'm concerned about the criminal justice system, and then those that try to turn it into indictment uh, of all law enforcement and uh, the American system of democracy. Well, you know, I, I think that there's very little democracy. I look at the democracy my father had, or what little democracy he faced, and uh, he always said to me, if it weren't for fellow veterans in this country, he couldn't have made it. That's because of the institutional racism in, in, in the country. And, and people just refuse to deal with that. Uh, you know, I look at um, aviation, for instance, where... Uh, people say, you know, you have to have good psychomotor skills to fly an airplane. And I know that uh, I know plenty of black people, uh, black pilots and potential pilots, who've gone into the Navy training program with 5,000 hours and uh, in civilian flying and couldn't get through the Navy program. So, and the question is, why? And, and, the, and, the, and the answer is simple. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's a game. But it's like this is getting back to Ferguson and, and New York. I was telling people, you know, I, I did an experiment this weekend. I laid on my stomach with my hands, tried to put my hands behind my back. And I found out I had a difficult time breathing. Now, I could imagine, uh, say, you put 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 220 pounds on my back and you cut off my windpipe. 
I'm going to seriously be in trouble. But, you know. Right. Well, that's why that tactic's been lar- largely banned, except for, you know, when there's an, ac- a, an actual physical fight going on where the police fe- feels like his, his life is threatened, it might be excusable. But that's generally been banned because of that uh, very reason. But the point I'm trying to make is that it goes from uh, we have to watch our rhetoric and what we feed into with these different narratives uh, that are destructive uh, because you can complain about these issues and talk about these issues rationally with data and, and specific anecdotal evidence as you did. But then once we start saying that American democracy is a facade or there's very little democracy or America has failed, uh, it is very similar to the rhetoric yeah. that we're seeing from these yeah. Islamist groups, and it does lead people to adopt uh, revolutionary think, standpoints that you, says, you, okay, you, you, well, it's all right then I, for me to attack the police since they're essentially evil and yeah. my That's life is happen, threatened. Um, and uh, at the same time, you do have to talk about the different successes that have happened, about how many uh, black police officers you have in an increasing number in places that like the NYPD, the fact that, that we have a black president that abuse. won by significant uh, Ryan, amounts Ryan, uh, twice. Ryan, one, one thing, let's, let's talk about that. One thing, just because a policeman's black does not change his motivation and his tactics. We have very corrupt, abusive uh, police off, black police officers here in Chicago. It's part of a culture, not a skin color. It's part of a culture. So, you know, so much for that. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have, it's nice to have some black faces, but at the end of the day, they're still cops. Can you and, prove that? Uh, and they, and at they the end of the day, they're still bad. cops? That's a horrible thing to say. That's a terror. Well, I can't I can believe say, you even said that. You just indicted all police yes, officers. Instead yes. of saying there's a serious problem, at the end of the day, they are still cops. They're still That's cops. Exactly. Thing and, and let me say this to you, Ryan. Let me say this, this to you, Ryan. Let me say this to you, Ryan. Let me say this to you, Ryan. Before I can't believe I even gave you an interview. Before That's a you were born, say, and before you were born, what I'm seeing from I was being pulled over by police group. officers and, 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 and given bogus tickets as a 15-year-old. So I don't care what you think about what I say about cops. When I leave my house evidence. in the morning, when I, when I leave my house in the morning, the first thing that I do, the first thing that I do in the morning is to check and see if I have my driver's license, Ryan. And the reason that I try to get my driver's license, Ryan, is because I know if I'm caught driving without my driver's license, where you, young white male, will get a warning or you'll get uh, maybe a ticket, they will take me, handcuff me, put me in the back of a car, take me and lock me up, and I have to get bail to get out of jail because I don't have my driver's license. That's a fact. So I don't no, care I what you think. white people of that I don't too. care what you Plenty. think. It's not true. It's not true. Do your homework. Yeah, Don't argue I, with me. Do I, I know people your homework. that that's happened to. That's insane. Go you're, do your homework. You're saying I haven't even experienced argument. that. You're relying on anecdotal evidence to do the entire police force. I'm not doing no anecdotal Oh, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, Charles Butler's show. Uh, you know, I, I just had this, this guy, Ryan Morrow, on, young guy, 27, 28 years old. And he said to me that my statement, that, that my scenario was anecdotal. I'm telling him when I leave my house every day that I leave my house, I make sure that I have some form of government ID on me because of the nature of the incidents that I face. And he said, oh, that's anecdotal. Now, I talked to J.C. Watts, former congressman from Oklahoma this weekend, and he told me a story about how after he shortly got elected to Congress and his picture was on every page or every newspaper in Oklahoma, because he was the first uh, black uh, representative elected to Congress, you know, since the Reconstruction or something like that, and his face was all over everything. I, that's how I met J.C. And uh, he had seven police officers pull him over in his hometown, in his little hometown, with their guns drawn. Seven. His dad was a police officer, J.C. Watt Sr. Anecdotal? To hell with Ryan. To hell with people who think like that. Anecdotal. Man, I would smack him. I would punch him out if he were here in the studio with me. Anecdotal? You'd have to keep me off of him. But see, that's what a number of you think out there. No, no, you know, Charles is, and black people and black men, they're just being anecdotal about 
their their existence here in America. B.S.